So what's the importance of aesthetics when it comes to culture and policy making, Pankaji? Aesthetics has always been central to our civilization. As artists and uh, any treatise, any shastra, if you consult any shastra, it will expound as much on how to be an artist, as much as it expounds on how to be an aesthetic. Uh, its responsibility is not limited to tell how to create good art, but also how to appreciate good art. And uh, uh, that person, uh, for example, it is seen in our vocabulary itself. There is a word nagrik, which in English would very dryly be translated as the word citizen. But nagrik is much more than that. Nagrik is actually a person as defined in our text on aesthetics and Sandari Shastra, text uh, Shastra, as a person who does not just live in the city, but supports great art, architecture, sculpture, music, painting. Right. Who has learned all these kalas to be able to appreciate it. Who has cultivated these feathers. He is also a rasik. He takes ras in the world. But he has these uh, rasas are higher pleasures, higher rasas. So he has taught himself these disciplines. So that he can enjoy the higher pleasures. And not only that, he supports them and he propagates them. That is the definition of an art. So you cannot just call yourself a Nagrik if you buy a flat and start living in a city, as people often do now. Uh, you have to do all of this. You have to support art. Because art in our culture has been a vehicle of meaning. The reason that uh, Hindu darshan, Hindu philosophy has seeped to every little corner of Bharat Varsh is uh, through art and through the art of storytelling. See, if uh, you want to, if a culture, a civilization wants to uh, convey its central principles, siddhanta, foundational ideas to every nook and corner, to every individual, there are only two ways. One is the totalitarian way. On the other hand, Sanatan Dharma had found a very good idea, the act of creation, act of creating art. And this is how we create the meaning. 